Marvel's Moon Knight is a show with characters, a plot, and questions. What happened to the fish? Who's in the third sarcophagus? And is anything real at all? It also features the Egyptian god of the moon, Khonshu, who looks absolutely awesome with his floating bird skull head, his crescent moon staff, and then he gets turned into a little stone figurine and put on a shelf. Which is basically what I'm going to be doing in today's video, except with a little bit of FIMO clay, tin foil, and a sculpting tool that looks more like a mummification instrument. But anyway, let's get straight into today's video. <laughs> You're going to want to start off with a layer of tin foil because it saves on clay, you can shape it, and it's a lot lighter, which is going to be very useful if you want some floating head shenanigans. Or also, I'm making the head first. Then, you can just cover the entire thing with a thin layer of FIMO, and to add some details, you can roll out a few. Can't call them wormy dealies. Uh, shaky snakies. Yeah, some thin shaky snakies to add some detail. What's going on? What happened? What is this stuff? Ah, well, it looks like I must have, you know, carved out his eye holes and added some more detail and texture to the back of his skull, and then baked it in the oven for 20 minutes at 120 degrees Celsius, and then forgot about it. I don't know. Um, but once you've done that, you probably want to start working on the beak. You want to add a big blob of FIMO to the beak, and whilst you could use some tin foil to save on clay, it will make carving out the nostrils more difficult. Once that's in place, you can start working on the nostrils, and you probably want to etch out the rough shape you want the nostrils to be in before carving out the clay. And I know, the colour of clay makes it incredibly hard to see what's going on. So I guess you just have to watch until the end to see what it looks like. You can then start adding in some texture by pressing the sculpting tool into the sides of the nostril to create that ribbed appearance. But you want to avoid scratching the surface of the FIMO with the tip of the sculpting tool, because that way you'll leave behind some clay crumbs and will also achieve a worse effect. You can use these same principles to add in the other nostril thing that he has. At this point, I noticed that the skull wasn't bulbous enough so I smushed on a big blob of FIMO, and whilst you could again use some tin foil, this time the added weight will help balance out the skull. After that, you can roll out a big wormy, I mean a uh, shaky snaky of clay, and attach this as the lower jaw. To finish the skull off, you can use your tool to add some texture, by pressing it into the surface of the clay, and using the varying widths of the tool to create different textures. Then you can bake it in the oven, and whilst you're waiting, you can scrunch up a nice tin foil body and impale it with a piece of wire, which is the secret ingredient to the quote unquote floating head. And if you have one, this would be a great opportunity to use a pasta machine to roll out a thin sheet of FIMO, which you can embalm the entire body with. Hmm? They usually works. Um. I meant embalm the entire body with. There we go, finally. Once the first layer is baked, you can slice out some thin strips of FIMO to act as bandages that overlap each other. Next, carefully cut out a rough crescent moon shape and stick it on. And then wrap another bandage on top of that. And then some final details like his exposed necklace and belt. You can also add some simple texture if you want, but once that's done, you can bake it as well. Once the body's out of the oven, you can scrunch up a suitably sized tin foil arm, but you don't need to worry about proportions too much, because A, a lot of it will be covered with the cloak, and B, this is a giant Egyptian god of the moon with a bird skull for a head. You can then cover the entire thing in FIMO and attach it to the body and blend the seams. Now, this next bit will take a lot of time to execute, but it's quite a satisfying process. We're basically going to be carving pairs of parallel straight lines to act as bandages and have them weave and crisscross over each other in kind of random patterns, and do this until the entire arm is covered. Now, here are two completely optional steps you could take to improve the look of this. 
First is you could blend the edges of the bandages down, so it looks more like they overlap each other rather than they've been carved in. Second, you could add some liney texture to just a few of the bandages, because it is less work and it also adds some variety. But with those optional steps or not, you can now give this thing a bake. Now is the trickiest part, his hands. I started with the rough square shape of tinfoil wrapped with Fimo as the base of the hand, but before we add any detail, it might be useful to just look at your own hand to see how these things work, like the different lengths of all the fingers, the big lump where the thumb joins the hand, and how these things move and are hinged. But with all that studying out the way, you can start adding thumbs and fingers, attach it to the wrist, add some texture, and give it a good old menacing pose. Now on to the rest of the limbs where- No, not again. Y you know what, maybe I just made the other limbs and forgot about it because it follows the exact same process as what I've shown before. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, but anyway, his staff. Some braided wire will make a sturdy base. I did this by hand, by the way. Which you're then gonna wrap in a layer of FIMO, and warning, this stuff does not stick well to the wire. The actual crescent moon part will be made by tracing and cutting out a circle from a sheet of tin foil before then slicing out the middle, shaping it, and coating it with clay. You can then smoosh the two pieces together and give it the twirl test to see how stable it is. And now you can just add details and texture. Once baked, you can attach the staff to the hand with a big old blob of final, which actually allows this thing to stand. Just make sure not to breathe too heavily when you're near this. You can then very carefully, and I mean carefully, you don't know how many times this thing fell over, add in all the fingers. I bent some wire to act as support for his arm because the staff wasn't really holding things up well enough, but this technique will also be used to make the robes look floaty. But once Contra's gotten a grip, you can add in his robes which are just ragged thin strips of FIMO that you can wrinkle in texture to make it look more like cloth. The upper robes can be made in exactly the same way, but they'll be green because I ran out of all my yellow clay. The back half will be made by one big sheet of clay, which will be snipped up to make several strands. I also removed the staff because it just kept falling over, and I decided I was going to super glue it in the end. But before I could bake this thing for the final time, I wanted the robes to look like they were blowing in the wind, so I bent some more wire stands to hold the robes in position. Once Contra was out of the oven, I superglued his staff and head in place, which meant that all I needed to do now was give him some paint. I'll just go get my day started and stare at the wall for about three hours straight today. Yeah, that sounds fun. Uh, see you guys next time, I guess.